What's up all you beautiful people? This is going to be episode 73, all about secrets that most real estate agents won't tell you. Um, I happened to stumble upon this uh, article on Yahoo. Um, so I guess stumble is not the right word. My dad actually sent it to me and said, hey, this looks pretty interesting. So I actually opened it, checked it out. I want to make a podcast episode. And so here we are. Episode 73, though, I want to say thank you to everyone that's always supporting us. We cannot do this without you guys. Uh, I love you so much, and thank you. Okay, without further ado, um, you guys know I love to be very transparent, um, and so I actually haven't reviewed all of these secrets, so we're going to actually take them as they come, and let's see what happens. So here we go. All right. First, House Proud. Every industry has its backstage and its back rooms where the sausage is made and the allure created. Home buying is no different and a window into the specialized knowledge of real estate agents and those who work alongside them leave you better prepared to take on the housing market. Okay, well, I don't know. First off, this guy looks kind of shady. <laughs> if you ever see me looking like that, uh, just slap me across the face. All right, first one, the market is thriving. The coronavirus pandemic made life and work revolve around the home, which surprisingly sent people moving. Many in uh, high-rise apartments no longer enjoyed riding an elevator with strangers and went looking for private homes. Those with private homes in the city may be looking to move to less populated areas or to finally invest in a country escape. Others working from home with uh, children in the house all day looked for a little more space. People are not spending money on entertainment or travel, says Steve S., whose business stages homes for resale and prefers not to be identified fully for business reasons. They think, I'm going to upgrade to home office. Here's who uh, got out of the market for the moment. International buyers and domestic travelers looking for uh, pied de terre in the city. I don't know how to actually say that. So one thing right now, um, during the coronavirus, of course, the market was thriving. It was going bonkers. Uh, the interest rates were at uh, levels we've never seen before. Uh, we've never seen anything like that. So it was like having a market on steroids. So this part, um, it's not that nobody's telling you the truth about that. It's just that during the coronavirus pandemic and all the stimulus package, money printing, uh, easy, cheap funds to get from lenders, um, that really put the heat on the market. That's why you had ridiculous offers, um, you know, $100,000 over asking price, waiving contingencies. Um, it, it really was an insane market, which I don't know if we'll ever see something like that again in our lifetimes. Um, anyway, the thing is right now, though, the market is cooling off. Of course, we're seeing the interest rates. Um, we did see a period of interest rate hikes from the Fed. So that is uh, squashing all of the coronavirus pandemic uh, steroid push. So uh, that part's kind of getting squashed right now. All right, let's do the next one. Underpricing is just a sales tactic. Well, if you guys know me really well, that is my favorite sales tactic. I am very transparent about that. I don't sugarcoat that at all. I love to undervalue property when we go to list it because it does put a bidding war on and gets the price pressure where we want it. Um, every seller that I've had that I could not get uh, talked into having a lower purchase price when we list, um, typically their home sits on the market and goes stagnant. So let's read through this, because um, I think it'll probably uh, say a bunch of stuff that I've already just said. So you may think you've stumbled across a gem that's been priced too low mistakenly. But agents know something that may seem odd at first. A lower listing price can bring in a higher closing price. Underpriced homes draw many shoppers and can res result in bidding wars that push the final sale well above asking. Overpriced homes will sit idle, eventually developing a stench of failure. Uh, we call that the kiss of death. Once a property has been on the market too long, it's got the kiss of death on it. A couple of things happen to, uh, have to happen. For them to move that property either a very large price reduction or a ton of upgrades in the home which is probably never uh, that usually doesn't happen or they take it off the market uh and wait 90 days in our mls to relist and hopefully they relist at a better price so a combination of those might happen of course but 
uh, that's generally what happens. So full transparency, I love to have homes listed at a very low uh, purchase price to start. Um, and that is to generate that buying traffic and the bidding pressure that we might might want. During the pandemic, that was insane. Everybody listed prices because it just didn't matter. Um, you listed a price and still got 20 offers over list. Um, so that part is gone from our uh, career field and our industry, but it still does make a lot of sense for sellers to have an underpriced list price when they go to the market. Um, and that generates that traffic. Right now, while the market's kind of transitioning, everybody's running to the bottom. So you may think you're listing it for a lower purchase price, um, and that still might not have been low enough. So there is a lot of working fine balance there. If you want more information about that on how I list homes or how I teach people in my staff uh, or on our team, um, reach out anytime. All right, up next, sellers hide how long homes are listed. Uh, this kind of goes to that part where I was talking about taking a home off the market and putting it right back up so that you have a new days on market listing. Um, this whole 30 days or less, um, so let's read through this really fast. As soon as a home is listed, its value starts to depreciate. That is very, very true. During the pandemic, if a home was on the market seven days, we knew that it had issues with something. Um, but now, as the market kind of cools off and we transition, um, 30 days might become the norm again, or 60 days, you know, where if a, if a property sit, sits stagnant for 60 days, um, maybe it's got issues with it or it's overpriced, something like that. Uh, but many online searches are set at less than 30 days on the market. A home listed for more than a few months can get uh, the whiff of desperation about it. That's that kiss of death. Uh, to counter that, owners and agents will take property off the market for 30 days and relist it. Uh, that's not true in the uh, Wasatch Front or the UtahRealEstate.com, our MLS. Uh, you have to take it down for a full 90 days and then it will reset the uh, days on market. Um, so 30 days just isn't um, accurate for our market, but people do take property down um, and then relist, hopefully with new pictures or new upgrades or new price, um, something like that. So full transparency, that, that's not something that's new. That just is a way to help people kind of re-see the property, kind of like uh, relisting your car on KSL, right? You're getting new eyes, new traffic, um, obviously on KSL, you can do that every day. Uh, you just can't do that on the board of realtors or on the MLS. It's gotta be a full 90 days off market. Then you can go back up and get it reset. Uh, let's see. Uh, you have to stage the space. Um, in my personal opinion, I don't love staging. I think it spends money that you don't need to spend, but that's up to each professional out there. So having a professional bring in furniture to fill a space stylishly is what gets a second look in many markets, drives up the asking price for expensive homes. People want to know what it looks like. The vacation spots, they'll buy it with the furniture. Um, under COVID, people don't have somewhere else to go while they fix it up. Uh, well, we're past COVID, so people can stay in their homes, no problem, and we can still uh, have people show the home. That's an easy thing to do. Uh, but my, my opinion, uh, staging homes just hasn't had a, a, a relatively, uh, or it hasn't had the benefit that people always talk about staging homes with. Um, me personally, I love the three D's that we try to tell sellers when they go to list. Those three D's are uh, declutter, depersonalize, and deep clean. I think I have an episode all about those, but if I don't, um, the decluttering is to just take all the large furniture out, get rid of all the stuff that's sitting on flat surfaces, um, take a lot of the pictures down that you might have, just make the home look like there's less stuff in it. That's always beneficial. Um, and then depersonalizing it. If you have a full like wall of family pictures, that's awesome. But people don't really want to see that when they're showing the home. And so taking a lot of those down would be great. Putting up some generic like Target brand, um, pictures might be beneficial or, or whatever. Um, or if you have like a giant moose head in the living room, that is an amazing piece of artwork, but it's not something that everyone's going to want to see. So I usually suggest taking a lot of that stuff down. Um, 
and just put it in the garage. Nobody really cares about the garage and what it looks like typically unless you have a special feature in there. So just fill up the garage with all your stuff and that would be great. The very last D is deep clean. I want it to be super clean. Usually professional cleaning is way better unless you're a clean freak, then it will be fine. Um, I shouldn't say clean freak, sorry, all you clean freaks out there. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if, if you like to clean and you can do a good job, then that's a great way to make money on your uh, purchase price because people will offer more on homes that are clean. If it smells bad, you're definitely gonna lose 10 to $20,000 just in what people think of the home um, right off the bat. So you want it to smell clean, you want it to look clean. Uh, but my personal opinion about staging, I just don't think you need to do that every time. Um, if you have a, a million dollar home or uh, or higher, potentially we might wanna stage that with things that look like it goes there. Uh, but, but again, I, love to have an empty space because I think that shows better. All right, uh, staging can be an optical illusion. This is more about staging, of course. Um, so if you're gonna, if you love to have a home that's staged, then we can talk about that. But to me, um, like I said, I like it to be empty. The, the optical illusion about putting small furniture in small spaces makes it look bigger. I tend to think that that might be true, but you're gonna, if you have a small space anyways, probably the purchase price is not that high and your margins are gonna be really, really tight. And so you might not even wanna spend money on staging. So that, that's neither here nor there. Uh, sometimes the extra effort isn't worth it. Oh, okay, so this is interesting right here. In less expensive areas, what I just kind of talked about, you can add only so much value to a home during the sales process. In those places, the cost of staging uh, may not be worth it. Oh, go figure. I just talked about that. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, compared with how much more it will bring in from the buyer. So at a certain point, the value of staging a home that's 200000 uh, makes your profit margin super tight. Well, that was almost verbatim. That was cool. Uh, online images may not be real. Huh, shocker. The way cameras are right now, they are really, really good about capturing a space in like a full frame. So I won't lie, we're all using companies that shoot our pictures um, or, or most people are using that type of lens and that type of camera. So a space will look a lot larger. Um, that's just the nature of the beast. We try to showcase the property in the best light possible to get people to come and see it in person. So that home that looks so spacious and chic online may be completely different when you see it in person. That's 100%. Uh, from its furniture to a paint job. Uh, we try to, we try not to embellish too much, of course, um, but we do try to make sure the pictures look really good online so that it draws in the foot traffic. Uh, for several years, virtual staging has allowed web whizzes to dress up photos. Yeah, for sure. Um, when sellers would like fewer strangers traipsing through their homes, virtual staging boomed. Uh, it is a cost saver to do a virtual, um, a virtual tour maybe than staging. Um, I don't, I've never done any virtual pictures that were uh, doctored up to have different furniture and stuff in there. Um, I don't think that's necessary. I like to have more realistic uh, expectations of that uh, property. So I've never doctored any photos or done some Adobe Photoshop or anything like that. We usually just have really good lighting um, the lens is kind of a wide angle lens so that you can see a lot of the frame. Um, and then uh, us personally, we do a virtual tour with all of our listings that are for me and my mom. And then some of our staff has uh, also done those as well. I do like the virtual tour because I think it gives you a realistic feel of the home. There are so many times that the layout of the home, you just can't tell from the pictures. Um, and so I really enjoy the virtual walkthroughs. All right, even the lawn might be fake. Yeah, that is uh, very, very true. So don't get too attached to the lush front yard or blooming flowers at the front door. Frequently sod's been installed and plants bought in the days before the home goes up for sale, 100%. Uh, curb appeal is very, very important. Um, I've never had any uh, listing do any fake um, like grass in the front yard or anything like that yet. Um, there are some zero-scaped homes that do have like fake lawn and things like that we have gotten sold. 
uh, but I haven't done any, any like fake stuff. It's always real. It's always something put in. Um, and the flowers do make things look better, but that is just some uh, curb appeal. The, those flowers do come with the house, of course. Uh, let's see, this says the greenery isn't established, may not even be appropriate for the climate. That's probably true. Uh, the result can be the heartbreak of dead grass and wilted flowers within weeks. I won't lie, that is a lot of uh, what happens to the flowers that are put out there. Um, if you have an immaculately manuscript, uh, or um, what is that called? Um, scaped? Manuscaped? No. Anyway, if you have an immaculate yard, um, manicured. If you have an immaculately manicured yard, um, then of course it's going to look great. But sometimes we want the curb appeal to look a little better, so we will put some things and some effort into doing that. Um, if it dies in a few weeks, that's kind of the nature of the beast. You do need to be aware of that though, I guess. As is and fixer upper aren't always the same. Interesting, it may look like a bargain fixer upper, but often a house marked as is is listed that way because it cannot pass inspections. You may end up with home repairs far more expensive than the purchase price. 100%. Uh, everything that you want to do is do your due diligence and get a home inspection. That's the easiest way to avoid all of that stuff, right? Just go into it with your eyes wide open. Your realtor or anybody on our staff should be making you aware that you can get a home inspection and should be encouraging you to get one on every home purchase. Uh, you need to translate real estate listings. Okay, let's see this. Uh, there's more to watch out for than the phrase as is because every industry has its own jargon. In real estate, cozy means tiny, charming can mean eccentric, and character just means old. <laughs> Mature trees need pruning or may even be close to death potential. Unless you're looking for a show on HGTV, you should run away. Well, um, we get kind of flashy with words, I won't lie, when we're putting in the public remarks. Um, I have been known to say brilliant kitchen or cozy uh, living area or whatever. Honestly, we're just describing what we feel like the words uh, or describing the home in words that we feel like um, fit that. Uh, we, we obviously don't go in there and say, hey, there's there's mold in the kitchen and that's going to be cozy. You know, we're, we're not doing anything like that, but we are trying to generate enough eyeballs to that listing. And it's just marketing, of course. So we're, we're marketing to the public so that we can get eyes on the pictures and then try to get the traffic to that listing. So full disclosure, we definitely write descriptions that may be too flashy in words. I don't think you need to translate. I mean, if you look at the pictures of a home that says cozy, they're probably going to look small. So that it doesn't make, need translating for that. Uh, you may not be warned about ghosts. Mm. In 46 states, there is no law regarding haunted houses, meaning you could be signing up for bumps in the night. New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, and Minnesota have laws involving the seller's responsibility when it comes to paranormal according to Zillow. I just personally on this note, the paranormal and uh, telling everyone about that, I think that if you had a real haunted house that way and it was verifiable, um, yeah, sure, that might be a seller's disclosure item, but I haven't seen any verifiable haunted houses like that. So anyway, uh, maybe put it in the comments. If you guys are aware of some, that would be awesome. I'm open to uh, checking it out. Um, I do think, though, that during due diligence for buyers, you should be asking the neighbors what they think of that house. Uh, if they know that it's a haunted house, they'll probably tell you. If they know that it's uh, a great home, they'll probably tell you that as well. If they love the neighborhood, they're probably going to tell you that. During due diligence, have more conversations. Talk to more people. Uh, run around and ask the neighbors. Maybe not even ne next door neighbors. Like, Maybe go around the back side of the street and ask those neighbors what they think about the house. There are tons of ways to find out and do your due diligence, but what I find is people are not interested in putting in that much effort, which is weird because it is their biggest purchase typically 
um, and you think you would want to put in a lot of effort to make sure it's the right home. So but anyway, uh, obviously you guys see Utah is not on this list. Um, I, I feel like it's probably because it's hard to verify that type of uh, um, criteria, right? It's not like you can go in and say, well, this has a ghost in it because I found it in the foundation or in the wall. Um, but if you found a crack in the foundation, that's easily verifiable. So I feel like I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this actually. So those states that have it as disclosures, I'm not sure how they got it that way or what happened there. So it's kind of funny. Um, let's see. You'll want to count the rooms carefully. That is true. That four bedroom home you just signed on might count only as a three bedroom. Why? Because listings in some hot markets will tout a bedroom in the basement that does not have a large enough window to meet fire codes and therefore does not legally count as a bedroom in that state. The same goes for a backyard shed. Someone is touting a mother-in-law apartment. Yeah, that's true. Um, there's a reason it's advertised for your mother-in-law and not your mother. Uh, that's kind of, that's kind of bad. If you don't like your mother-in-law, you guys should fix that relationship. Um, but that's just a side note though. Uh, anyway, that is true about bedroom counts um, because it is all subjective on the MLS. We just kind of put that information in there. Um, there are ways that we try to help combat that by um, giving suggestions back to the listing agent and saying, hey, that really doesn't fit the criteria for a bedroom. You know, I would put it back to make sure that it uh, is truthful. However, uh, it does go to without saying that your due diligence, you should be looking into that. That is one of the things that you should be aware of is that sometimes rooms aren't actually a bedroom, right? If you have uh, what's called an office, like in a front area and there aren't any windows and no closet or something like that, people could be calling that a bedroom and you could even use it as a bedroom later on, but it might not be a bedroom technically to be on the MLS. And so you got to be aware of that. Uh, let's see. Lighting is among the cheapest upgrades, of course. Good, uh, good lighting and stylish fixture can be bought for far less than other home improvements and have an outsized impact on the home's presentation. I don't know why this is even on here as a bad thing or something to be aware of. I mean, having somebody put in some great light fixtures to bring up the light quality of the room um, and also make it have a different look and feel. I don't feel like that's a bad thing. That's just making the space a little bit more new uh, or newer or have a, a new vibe. Uh, I tend to think that one's awesome. Uh, and I would love more sellers to do light upgrades because it makes the spaces feel amazing. All right. There's a formula for finding an agent. Ooh, let's see what Yahoo has to say about this. Uh, knowing the business and the market has value. Duh. But most of all, you want an agent who is going to work for you and your home. Also, duh. The perfect intersection of qualities in a real estate agent is know-how and enthusiasm. If they're knowledgeable but seem uninterested in you, that's a concern. And eagerness but lack of experience can also be a red flag. Uh, that That's a definite. I mean, that this is like sales 101 right you can always have somebody who's over eager to sell you something and they have no experience in the market um, you could always have somebody that's over eager to sell you anyways uh, just because maybe they really need the paycheck for that month um, that's just that's just part of sales right we're all out there trying to help uh, provide for our families provide for our futures and stuff like that the main thing that i think is an unexperienced agent Hopefully you can pick that out really, really easily, but sometimes that it is masked as well. So um, I like to read reviews about what people have written about other agents. Like when I was purchasing a home outside of Utah, um, I read reviews on other agents so that I could find out what other people thought about that person. Um, that was a really easy way to find out if they had skills, if they were knowledgeable, if they really were gonna take uh, good care of me. Um, something else that always stands out that I try to do for my clients is to be readily available um, pretty much 24-7. So the enthusiastic part for me is the ability to get back to me as quickly as possible with information. So for my clients, if they text me or call me, I try to get them the answer as quickly as possible because I feel like that's me providing value for one and I'm enthusiastic about helping them. I really want to make sure that people understand that. 
Um, I do talk about that with our team all the time is to make sure that you are quick uh, to respond with people that are asking you questions because that helps make uh, or that helps foster a good relationship between each other. All right. Um, I think that's it. Let's see. Um, yep, it goes to into number of teachers. So um, let's go back. All right, so that is uh, our episode today. It's all about secrets that most real estate agents won't tell you. Um, I have no secrets in this business. We are super transparent. That's the way I like to do business and that's the way I, I love to have business uh, accomplished with me. Um, so I don't really feel like those were earth shattering secrets, but they some of them are hidden. Uh, some people will try to hide that kind of stuff. So uh, if you do have questions that aren't, addressed in this uh feel free to message me call me text me anytime uh love you guys and thank you for watching our podcast we are, are just so appreciative of you uh thank you so much all right we'll see you